The tale of the Hurstwood ghost dates from early in the 19th century when the great-great-grandfather of the present baronet first inherited Hurstwood. He was expecting his two young daughters to return from school on the continent, but as it happened, they came a day early, and he was away when they arrived. So there was no one to greet them but an elderly caretaker who finished her work and left before dark. Indeed, they could find only a stump of a candle with which to light their way to bed. But once there, the two girls were not dismayed, especially Julia, the more venturesome of the two. They lay chatting for a time in the candle's feeble light, when suddenly they thought they heard a sound from somewhere below. A sound as of someone moving about the house. Geraldine was frightened, but Julia said she was going to investigate. Geraldine tried to dissuade her, but it was useless. Julia took the candle and departed, while Geraldine fearfully awaited her return. Presently, after a long silence, she heard a muffled sound which she could not identify. She waited, straining her ears, but the noise was not repeated. Finally, she heard the sound of footsteps coming up the stairs. They came along the hall and turned into the room. She called out to her sister, but there was no answer as the steps came on across the room. Geraldine laughed anxiously and begged Julia not to play jokes, but only silence answered as the footsteps paused beside the bed. Geraldine reached out her hand and felt a wave of relief as it touched the soft edge of her sister's dressing gown. She lifted her hand to touch her sister's face, but felt instead something wet and warm. When their father arrived the next morning, his eyes were assailed by a dreadful sight. On the stairs, a trail of blood, with footsteps leading upward. And on the floor in the girl's room, Julia's body, its head severed from the trunk. And on the bed, his beloved Geraldine, her hair snow white, her lips mumbling the tortured fancies of a maniac. In time, they pieced the story together from her ravings, but she remained completely mad. The deed was attributed to a homicidal lunatic who had just escaped from the nearby Sunnyview Sanitarium. What a lot of tripe. That's set. Well, here we go. Sir Stephen, or, or is it Derek? Now, I'm glad you showed up because things were getting pretty dull. By the way, old boy, you forgot something. Your head. Uh, I'd ask you in, but it seems a little late for that. That was a neat trick coming in. How did you do it? A sliding panel? Now, that's a nice effect. I'd love to know how you did it. Do you do this professionally or, or, or just to entertain friends? By the way, old boy, when you get to the foot of the bed, you can hold up there if you don't mind. Oh, you're a mighty taciturn ghost, aren't you? But I think I should tell you that I have a gun. I'm quite willing to shoot if you don't stop now. Now look, don't come any closer, do you hear me? Don't come any closer! All right. All right. Now, didn't you hear me? I said don't. But I, I, I said... Any closer? Hey, you want me to run? But I'm not gonna run. No! I won't run! I suppose it is better than having the old place pulled down. 
But it's a gloomy business anyhow, isn't it? Well, at least I come out of it with a bit of money this way. More than it's worth, really. Yes, there's that. You say it's a Canadian who's buying? Yes, a flyer. He stayed here a few weeks once when he was wounded in the Battle of the Bulge and liked it. Very wealthy. Oil, I believe. Oh, like that American. Lorimer, or whatever his name was. Do you remember him? Did you ever hear from him again? Oh, yes. Latimer. No, I never did. I suppose he went back to the States and joined up once they got in. Seems a century ago, doesn't it? I wonder how he came through. Yes. Why, it's the gentleman from America, Mr. Latimer. Hello, Latimer. You seem to have come through the recent mess very well. Looking very fit, I should say. Well, thank you. It's nice of you to say so. I, I feel quite well, in fact. Latimer, how nice. And how odd. You know, we were just now wondering about you. Yes. Stephen here got himself a game leg, but we all made it. And I suppose that's the main thing. Yes, isn't it? You know, you gave us quite a fright that night you stayed here. When you passed out, we thought you were dead. Yes. It took us forever to find a pulse. We thought the doctor would never get here. It was a tremendous relief when we telephoned the doctor next morning and he told us you were simply in a state of shock and would come out of it all right. You were always meant to get in touch, you know, but never quite got around to it. I paid Stephen the money, of course. We decided that a faint from fright was equivalent to running. It seems obvious that you would have run if you'd been able. And of course, Stephen needed the money so much more than you did. It was a lifesaver, really. Yours was one of the most successful apparitions we ever staged, I believe. I've always thought it was the way we handled the blanks. The blanks? Yes, by putting one real bullet into the clip and letting you fire it into the fireplace, you'd be less likely to realize the remainder were blanks. I always thought that story about Julia and Geraldine and the headless ghost and all of it was far too theatrical. Yet... Julia. Then you're the one! Will you... You won't escape this time to murder an innocent child! Get away from me! You won't escape this time to murder an innocent girl! Oh, what's wrong with you? Have you lost your mind? Hey! Away! No, you don't! You'll never, never escape from me again! Never escape! Get out! Get out! Get out! I'm terribly sorry, sir. He gave us a slip. Look, we knew where to come to right away. Always comes here, he does. Comes here? From where? From Sunnyview. It's a sanitarium right over the hill, sir. You know. Yes. No. 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 Harmless as a baby is between his attacks. But he'd kill a man. Just like that when one of them's on him. But that's a fact. Seems he's got some idea his sister Julia was murdered. And he's got to be revenged on the man that cut her head off. Julia! Julia! Goodbye, sir. God have mercy on us. <laughs> 